The IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that was created by the United Nations to provide an assessment of climate science. And it consists of scientists from all around the world who get together to encapsulate our current knowledge and understanding about the state of the climate. I work on the Working Group 1 report of the IPCC and this is the report that looks at the physical climate system. And there are 209 lead authors, including myself, who meet to prepare this report. And I'm what's called a coordinating lead author, which means that I work with a colleague called Nathan Bindoff from the University of Tasmania in Australia to write one of the chapters of that report. For the authorship of IPCC, there are authors from all around the world, uh, both men and women, and from a whole variety of different backgrounds. And that's what really makes another aspect that really makes it great working on the IPCC. So for example, in my chapter, we have a number of authors from Africa and from North America and from India and from Australia and of course from Europe as well. And so it makes for a really interesting and vigorous debate with, with people with different perspectives and different understandings also of what climate change is doing in their particular region of the world. The subject matter that we're looking at in this report uh, looks across the whole climate system. It looks at the observations, can we say that the world has warmed? It then looks at how we can explain those observations. Is this due to the fact that there are more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere or is it due to other things like, for example, maybe the changing output from the sun? And then it looks about what are the future projections? What is likely to happen in future? Right at the very start of the process is a big meeting called the scoping meeting where all the governments and leading scientists get together and they flesh out the bare bones of the report. And I was present at that meeting that founded the beginning of this process. And then what we have to do, we pretty much have a blank piece of paper apart from just one or two headings. And in the case of our chapter, that was detection and attribution of climate change. And then we have to fill in that blank piece of paper with what is the current state of the knowledge. And then over a succession of meetings, in fact, four meetings, we then develop the whole report. So the report goes through several stages of review. In fact, overall, there were over 50,000 review comments, every one of which has to be responded to individually by the author team. And these reviews come in from experts. People can declare that they, they wish to review the report, and then they, they have the opportunity to do that. And then there's also a process of government review. Now, this is very much about the science, but nevertheless, the governments have opportunities to review that report to make sure that it is as robust and comprehensive as possible. The final part of the process is a plenary meeting at which all the governments who are part of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change meet and they agree line by line the final summarising document of the report which is called the Summary for Policymakers. And this is, isn't just a simple rubber stamping exercise but at the same time it's something where the scientists are present, including myself, and we have to agree uh, to what is decided at the end of the day. And that has to be consistent with our current scientific understanding. Now this is quite a vigorous uh, debate because we have to really be sure that we've got the science right. And that's the key point about this meeting. We must make sure that we've got the best possible assessment of the science. Well, the IPCC isn't, isn't a rigid body. Um, it's always evolving and adapting to new circumstances. And we've seen that with the fifth assessment report, with updates around the processes and around the way in which the report is disseminated compared to previous reports. Now, as we look into the future, then people are now starting to think about, well, what would be the best way to prepare these reports in future? And thinking about whether it might be more appropriate, for example, to have more frequent reports on particular themes, like, for example, looking at the Arctic or looking at the Indian monsoon. The IPCC reports are all heading towards government negotiations leading up to a major meeting in 2015 where governments will seek to address the challenges of climate change. And what they will have there is these reports from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that will give them the latest state of the science that will then be able to advise them in their negotiations.